Good evening and welcome to the Australian Stock Market Show. Now, the market has been volatile the past week, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. The question is, what do you do? Sit on your hands and wait, buy more stocks, or look at ways that how you can profit from the volatility. Given the recent bearish nature of the market, tonight's show is all about whether it's a good idea to sell your ASX stocks before the 30th of June tax cutoff. We'll also give you our top stock tips for the second half of 2023. First up tonight, we'll share our hot stock tip for the week before diving into our view on the major world currencies. So sit back and relax. Tonight will be jam-packed as we answer your emails, take your phone calls, and give you the answers to some of the important questions around the market. Hello and welcome to the Australian Stock Market Show. I'm Dale Gillam, your host for tonight, and joining me is Janine Cox, and we're Australia's most trusted stock market educators. Great to be here tonight, Dale, and thanks for everyone's support. We're so excited to bring our full hour show back to YouTube. Now, Dale, everyone's waiting. What is our hot stock tip tonight? Well, Janine, I have got Len Lease as a hot stock tip tonight, but I'm going to bring up, before I bring up the chart, I want to bring up um, the actual website. I want to go to a couple of things on the website here, if I can click over here. I was reading this on the Financial Review. You can see it's a Financial Review website, and this came out just a couple of days ago. You can see the 25th of June there, and it says, Lend Lease raises 600 million selling Bangaroo cash flows. Um, and obviously you can't read the whole article on here on the, unless you're a subscriber. But are just saying that uh, they're stepping up his five-year turnaround plan to pivot the construction giant to an investment-led business as it sells two more transfers of cash flows at one of its major Sydney projects. So it's cashing itself up. It's got a five-year turnaround plan because Lendlease has been quite bearish of late. And so we'll look at that on the chart in a minute. But I want to go through and show a couple of other things. This is one of your favorite free websites, um, which is marketindex.com, just to show a few little things that we've got or information that we can get around Lendlease. Now we know there's a few things. Its market cap is 4.91 billion over there. Um, it has 689 million ordinary shares and it's number nine out of 97. So it's um, ranked 95 out of 2,420 stocks on the ASX. So it's one of the bigger ones. It's one of the better ones. What I liked was this minus 23.33% <laughs> one year return. And people go, Dale, you're crazy. <laughs> Why would you want to have that kind of return? Well, what goes down must come up. Uh, probably the only couple of things here, we've got a P ratio of 274. That's huge. Uh, but a dividend yield of 2.23%. So it's on the lower level. Um, and as you can see on its chart, it's had big, big moves down. Now, there's a lot more information uh, that you can find out on Lendlease on lots of different things. But I want to, before I get to the chart, which I want to do in a second, I just want to show you its EPS earnings. Now, this is from a, um, a website called tradingeconomics.com. And I know you and I go there every now and again. And this is actually showing its EPS returns over a period of time. And you can see here how the EPS is quite low at this particular time. So again, this is more historical normal levels on. So I think EPS will be going up shortly, but this could be one of those dark horses in terms of getting ready, not necessarily now to buy. And one of the reasons why I say that is it's hitting some pretty strong support levels. Obviously this one here, there's a lot of strong support going back decades at around that $6.80, $6.90. And this level here, this $5.80 level, it's not its second strongest support level, but it's almost, uh, and just, I wanna show you just a little bit here on the chart here. Here's some of the trend lines I've draw, drawn on this stock um, going back a number of years. It is now finding some support right through here. So if this thing gets above that line, 
I like it, Janine. Mm. I do really, really like it. So that's my wrap on Len Lace for the week. So I do hope you like it. I do. That's the stock I'm watching too. And that's it for our weekly hot stock tip. If you have questions for us, send your questions to the number on your screen. Now to get things started, we've got some giveaways. Now the first two people to text into the show will get a free copy of my book, Accelerate Your Wealth. So pick up your phone and get texting now. Now tonight is the fourth week in the month. So let's take a look at world currencies. All right, on the screen, you've got what? You've got the world currencies and you've we got do. the yearly figures for those? Yes, that's the yearly figures. So interesting to see the uh, Australian dollar versus the Russian ruble is up 12.2%. Wow. Wow, it's a lot, isn't it? And um, Australian dollar versus Jap the Japanese yen up 7%. But what I thought was really interesting is how we're just mm -hmm. above the Chinese remember yuan, 2.7% up at the moment. So are you planning any overseas travel? No, not at the moment. Not in the near they term? They won't let me in. I know I'm you a, want to. They, nobody lets me in. They won't let you in? No. Nah. Okay, they see you coming a mile away, no, do they? they do say they, they see me coming a mile away. Can we just get onto the currencies rather than about my travel habits? <laughs> Okay, the Australian dollar versus the New Zealand dollar is pretty much line ball. It's up 0.88% there. Australian dollar versus the US dollar, though, we're mm. actually down 1.04%, which is really good for us, really, isn't it? Well, we're sitting at about 66, 67 cents US, which is roughly where they want it, isn't it? Roughly in that sweet yeah, spot. Yeah, no, it's usually a bit lower, I thought. The, that's the 65. RBA prefers it down towards the 70 mark. Yeah, 65 would be sort of a turnaround situation well, where they have to change pull different it's levers I guess. you're not happy with 66 okay <clears throat> well look i think it's too low personally but anyway um australian dollar versus the singapore dollar down 1.34 mm -hmm. percent australian dollar versus the hong kong dollar minus 1.75 then we've got the australian dollar versus the euro minus yep. 3.9 so that's down quite a bit <clears throat> australian dollar versus the canadian dollar um, I know that's actually mm -hmm. a favourite um, travel destination for a lot of people. Canada's amazing, isn't it? Why is this always about travel? What is it about making money on currencies and trading currencies? Look, I just think that people are more interested in the travel. That's what well, I'm Well, they're watching a stock market show. They want to be talking about making money on they currency They want to trade. know that if they're going to go overseas, what no, are we expecting for the currencies? they want to know how they the make currencies? money on the Australian dollar currency trades. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's what they want to know. I disagree. Australian dollar versus the Swiss franc down minus 5.6%. Australian dollar versus the British mm. pound sterling minus 6.85%. Are we going to look at some charts on these? We are. Okay, cool. so let's just have a look. Because if they want travel oh, information, they can go to flight center okay let's have a look at the australian dollar versus the swiss franc so <sighs> at the moment um we we saw this happen uh, recently where it bottomed and we expected it to take off again but look what happened look, last month it reversed again well so it was starting to look exciting wasn't it in mm. terms of the move up but um not to be so we're just hovering back down here at around that what is it six you can see that better that is 59.51 cents mm which is interesting, but this is one that I think is worth keeping an eye on because yep. we could soon see a bit of a turnaround from this point. We're just waiting to see that happen. Okay. All right, the next one we've got on the screen there is the Chinese Remember Yuan, which has actually taken off. This one I think is the exciting one to see. It is. In terms of our currency performing well against the Chinese currency. So a nice move above all of that resistance there. That's, that could um, put the Australian dollar in a really nice position to move higher against the Chinese currency. I we could be challenging really levels up here. Stuff today. I, was, I was interviewing Dana Samuelson for Talking Wealth, mm. who's the gold expert in the US with 42 something years of experience. We were talking about currencies mm -hmm. and how the US dollar is going to work and what's been traded in US dollars. Did you know Saudi Arabia is now selling oil to China, not in US yeah. dollars? Mm. And it's doing, there's other things happening at this point in time, but um, need to watch this space with the Chinese we do, don't yuan. We? Very, well, very Well, there's much so. a lot of countries are voting that China, mm. China will be the superpower, not America. And China, and part of what he was talking about is China, mm. the, there's the Shanghai Gold Exchange now that anybody's got yuan offshore can then go and buy gold at the Shanghai Gold Exchange. Well, it's been a so while since be we've been. spoken to our other gold expert. It is. In, but, uh, in but, Hong Kong, isn't it? We should yes, we have another gold reconnect. expert in, John, in Hong Kong, but uh, watch out for Dana Samuelson's interview in the next couple of weeks on Talking Well. All right, mm. that's a good one. And have we got time for one more? I don't know, probably. All right, they're not saying stop, so I'm going to keep going. So. 
here we go here. We're looking at the monthly chart of the yeah. Australian dollar versus the euro, which we haven't looked at for a while. A huge correction down. I don't see that recovering anytime soon, personally. No. It just doesn't look like a setup yet. We need to see a move back above, probably around this level here, around, what's it, 65 cents. So that's before. pretty normal levels for the, the the euro and the Aussie dollar, isn't it, really? Historically, it, mm. it likes to be around that level, doesn't it? All right. Is that it for the currencies? Or? Well, that's it for our thoughts on the world currencies. Next, we have some great stocks to share with you, including BHP and CSL. Now, Janine, let's get into our first email for the night. Our first email is from Chris, who says, Hi, Janine and Dale. I've recently completed your diploma course and am now doing analysis on my watch list before I buy some stocks. I have rules which I will use before I enter. However, it looks possible that some of these stocks may see some selling off to too many investors still doing tax time selling before June 30. Now I feel that if I hold off for the next couple of weeks that I may be able to buy at a better price. Knowing that the chart and fundamentals of my shortlist should see gains into the near future. What do you think? Thanks, Chris. I'm excited because he's actually got mm -hmm. a shortlist, which yes. is really nice. So that's something that a lot of people don't think about. Do they? I mean, I remember meeting some people years ago who mm -hmm. came to us who weren't studying with us at the time, and they had this massive long list of stocks. And I said, how in the world, if you're working, can you possibly keep up with all of those shares? Mm -hmm. And the guy said, look, I trawl through those every week. And he said, it's creating a nightmare for me. So, so not answering Chris's question. He, the fact that he's got a short list and a watch list this, tells me he's really getting his stuff together. And that's is, really but that's exciting. still not answering his question. <laughs> so what's the answer to his question? Well, he's look, saying he's got stocks to watch. He's got a watch yeah, list mm -hmm. he, that you mentioned. He's got his rules on it, and now he's saying, mm -hmm. should I wait? Now, obviously, he's only recently finished out of course, because on experience, you'd know the answer to that. Well, if you've but got rules, then you're waiting for the rules to trigger. Correct. It's so sort he's of saying, should I hold off for a few weeks while they drift lower? And if they're going to drift lower, they're not going to trigger your rules. That's right. So, but if they, the, the answer, Chris, if you have rules for reason and trading strategy for a reason, so if your stocks do trigger the rules that you have as you buy, then you just buy um, regardless of waiting for the 30th of June because if they are selling them off, they're not going to trigger your rules anyway uh, until after the 30th of June. If they but what if, what if they had actually triggered the rules still and buy. then started drifting south still but he buy. was just not unsure um, and it would start drifting south? It still depends buy. how it's moving in the downward direction whether or not you would have. Like, well, you you've got to make a judgment call based on that point. So if, you see, if mm -hmm. you've come along and you've seen, oh, the rules had triggered but now it's actually trading back down and is looking a bit questionable then you're not going to buy until it goes back through your level again. But if you've bought mm. because your rules have triggered and then afterwards it starts to fall away, that's why you have stop losses. Well, that's true. That's so true. You've got to have those. Because you don't second mm. guess your rules. And, and that's, that's, what this, that's what tonight's all about, isn't it? Is it? The stop losses. Stop losses is what tonight's <laughs> all about. So hopefully that answers Chris's question. But mm. uh, if you are waiting to text us, there's a number on screen anyway to text the show to ask your questions. Okay, Chris, thanks for that. If you're watching tonight's show on YouTube, please support the show and hit that subscribe button now. Also, hit the like button. It's easy and completely free. Now, if you're watching us on YouTube and you'd like to access a private link to watch my analysis of the top 20 stocks, remember to post below or post a comment below this video and then email us your image of that post and in return, in the first week of July, we will send you the private link to my analysis and what I believe the top 20 stocks will do in the coming year. So if you are already a subscriber to TalkingWealth.com, you automatically receive access to the recording as part of your subscription. That's really awesome view. Remember to email a clear image of your post to info at wealthwithin.com.au. Now our next email is from Anthony who says, Hi Dale and Janine, loved tonight's show and I'm keen for a one hour rendition next week. Well, you've got that, mate. Now for the next week's episode, I was wondering if you could please break down Sandfire Resources for me. I do not currently own the stock. However, feel it has some good momentum behind it with a price target in the short to medium term of $8.80. What is it? $8.80, 50, $8.850 or something. I can't. $8 to $8.50. Oh, $8 to $8.50. I wish I could read properly. Uh, thanks always for your help. And I've been loving the content both on YouTube and talkingwealth.com with 
thanks Anthony. So let's have a look at this one for Anthony. So this is Soundfire. Sandfire resources. Now, first of all, the interesting thing to talk about this stock while we're answering his question is yeah. now it just need a um, a line here. It doesn't really matter what it is, a trend line. But if you just have a look, ha look at how long it tends to go sideways mm -hmm. in any of these moves here before it then takes off again. I'll so a whack of time. Yeah. So that was a big sideways move Couple up there. Years. But is it different now? And that's the real question that. I'm really wanting to answer about this stock because I happen mm. to think it's interesting for short-term trading mm. as well. However, it's about when is it really good for short-term trading because for, for, for years it has, you know, it's had maybe you could get a few weeks out of it where it would yep. do something interesting, but then you'd be better off not to be in it most of the time. So this means it's not a stock for everybody. It's someone who's looking for these short-term trades. Now, doesn't it? But that's what I'm, you know, highlighting. Um, he's talking about eight eight fifty up here, is a very real possibility for the stock to take off, given mm. that it's moved up so strongly. But right now, with the last month but um, being down and this month being an inside bar, I'd just be waiting for a bit of clear direction. So it's probably wise that he's asking these questions right now. Well, the thing is, it's working out whether there's enough upside. If by the time you get a buy signal, whether it's on a monthly or weekly chart is to where it might find resistance and stop mm. rising. So is there enough profit in there? So, I mean, that's really what you're talking about, isn't it? So that's if you're right, looking yeah. at this and we're putting on something like this and you say, okay, from here to $8.50 is 44%. So there's plenty of mm. space for it to, to actually give you some profit should you get an entry signal somewhere around here. But if we go and look at the weekly chart, you can see it's a little bit more volatile, can't you? It, but, and it's, bit, it's mm. about indecision at the moment. It's really not What I wanted to highlight going is anywhere. look at the volume here in this period, but prior to where all those sideways pattern, look at the volume there. So there's a lot more volume going in this over the last sort of 18 months, two years here. And we can see that through this changing shape of how it's unfolding. And I think the more volume it's getting, the better it's better it's moving. So again, depending on where your buy for signal is, I, I like it. I think mm. I like what he's doing. I think to keep up the good work. So I think that's fantastic. It does look interesting, doesn't it? All right, Janine, I think we've got a text for tonight or our first text for tonight is from Ben. Now, Ben's saying, please explain market cap and why super funds won't look at it until it's $1, as you've mentioned. Wouldn't market cap be more important than stock prices to fund managers? Good question. That is a really good question. So why don't they look at it unless it's a dollar? Oh, look, that's just sort of a blanket statement that we use from time to time, mm. but it's more about the market capitalization. You're right in the liquidity of it. So mm. generally stocks that are trading around that dollar mark, a lot of them tend to be less liquid and therefore not available to the big funds. So you really do have to look at it in terms of the macro on the stock, mm. looking at not just its um, market capitalization and the price that's trading around, but also its liquidity and and what pro its prospects are, because earnings are extremely, stocks at that sort of level, around that dollar mark, they're extremely sensitive to news that comes out, so you need to be on top of that okay, so information. The question is market cap, and you haven't answered that one yet. Yeah, because okay. it's a bit, you can answer it if you like, but it's well, just said, a bit. what is market cap? So we need to explain yeah. that. So market okay. cap is basically the share price multiplied by the number of shares on issue. So if there's a million shares and the share price on issue, there's a million shares that the, the company has on issue and the share price is a dollar, their market cap is one dollar times a million. If their share is ten dollars, it's one million shares times ten dollars. So that's how you work out your market cap, Pam. What managed funds do in looking at market cap is market cap is what you get you into every one of the size indices. So if you're looking at the top 10 stocks, they're there because of market cap. Top 20 stocks is an index, and so the top 20 stocks by market cap are in that index. As stocks move up from the top 200 to the top 100 to the top 50 to the top 20, the more the fund managers take a look at it because their mandates, especially ones like your super funds, have a mandate which might say, we only invest in the top 100 stocks in the Australian market. So anything outside the top 100, they wouldn't look at until their market cap was big enough to push them into the index and the indexes are reweighted every quarter, aren't mm -hmm. they? Yeah, every quarter. Anything else you'd like to add? 
No, that's good. You've wrapped it up really nicely. Oh, good. Well, I'm glad we're answering the questions. So let's okay. go. We've got a text from Mark, and Mark's asking about Telstra. Really good question. Thoughts on this? Buy, sell. My strategy for exit will be a trailing stop of 5% from the closing price today. Whoa, so let's that's have tight. a look at Telstra. Um, buy or sell? Um, look, it depends well, it on your rules. doesn't tell us anything, does it? Does it doesn't tell us whether he owns or he doesn't own it. Exit price will be 5% from the closing price today. Why? So um, let's just have a look and see where that would end up being, just mm -hmm. out of interest. Mm -hmm. And we've got to come down here, 5% somewhere around here. So we set a stop loss, it looks like, somewhere down there, which I'm really not too um, concerned about in terms of why he's setting the stop loss there. He's obviously got some but reason, context, but he hasn't isn't talked it? about if, it. If he owns it... There's one context. Mm. If he doesn't own it, second concept. Yep. If he doesn't own it, it's whether you buy it. And then but if it, he wouldn't, he wouldn't be saying that he set a stop loss there if he didn't no, own it. No, that's what he's saying, stop loss. Yeah. So to me, it's, it's whatever the answer is, it's context. If he owns it, yes. then there's a different context for where the stop loss is. If he doesn't own it, is it a buy? And it's not a buy right now, no. Well, it's a hold in my book. It's a hold in my book. Yeah, so it's not a sell just yet, but it's I a, love this it long depends term. on I your rules, it. though, like how you're trading it. But if mm. he's got a stop loss like that, I think he's more into it for the medium but we, to long but term. But we don't know whether he owns it. So to me, it's not mm. a the, the question needs to be better. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, phrase I better. own this stock and yeah, I'm so setting my stop loss. Help there. us, Mark, by um, putting a bit more meat into the, that. And if you did and somebody hasn't transcribed that clearly, then <laughs> it's not back on you, okay? So well, that's we look forward too. to hearing from you again. Now, if you're interested in building your wealth, then subscribe to TalkingWealth.com and you'll get access to hundreds of interviews with experts from around the globe. Take up your free seven-day trial now by visiting TalkingWealth.com. Now it's time for tonight's topic, but before we get into some more great stocks, my quote for tonight comes from American business magnate, investor and philanthropist, the CEO and chairman of Berkshire Hathaway, a $730 billion US company, a man who needs no introduction, Warren Buffett. Now, Dale, as you know, we're fast approaching the end of another tax year. So Buffett's quote is perfect to kick this off. He said, should you find yourself in a chronically, <laughs> leaky, a chronically leaky boat? Energy devoted to changing vessels is likely to be more productive than energy devoted to patching leaks. Mm. I like the quote. It's you said he needs quote. no introduction, yet your introduction to it to the quote was super long. <laughs> so, <laughs> Isn't that perfect? But he's right. I mean, people spend a lot of time keeping mm. what they have yep. rather than going, let's go to something else. And mm. we have often said, what is the cost of holding a stock that's going down? Exactly. Which is exactly what we're going to answer tonight. So I love what you're talking mm. about. Yeah, it fits I love perfectly, it doesn't I think it? it really does perfect. So in our topic tonight, we're going to discuss whether you should sell your ASX stocks before the 30th of June. And we'll also answer the question, if it's wise to sell your stocks before the end of the financial year, we'll also share tips to help you decide which stocks to sell and our top stock tips for the second half of 2023. Firstly, we need to address the elephant in the room again. Is it wise to sell stocks before 30 June? As you know, the financial industry promote this every year, but are investors getting the right information? What's this with elephants all the time? You always talk about elephants in the room. It's animal friendly, show. And then you look at me when you say it. <laughs> there's no pun intended again, and it's nothing to do with you. Okay. Okay, so the elephant in the room is absolutely selling stocks before the 30th of June. And there are reasons for this and reasons against this, but I know yeah. it comes up every year. But is it just the brokers I trying to. I know that you're passionate about well, trying to help I, people to I work out I just think it's the brokers here. pushing to get more turnover going mm. over. Yeah. Um, so they make more money before the end of the 30th of June, just like, you know, the. 30th of June sales. Well, look, accountants might argue that there is a legitimate reason for there doing is. it. There is. There's a tax argument you mm. could make from it, but for it, but is it but really beneficial? But I guess beneficial? if you, you saw someone, someone came to you and said, look, this is my portfolio, have a look, you would probably look at it and say, yep, throw those out, keep those, you know, just sift through there it and work out. There is some tidying up to do. And I was, when I was presenting mm. about a week ago for a group, I said, now's the time to tidy up your portfolio and maybe offset gains and losses uh, mm. by doing a bit of a reshuffle of your portfolio. Um, but to me, you know, that it really needs to be worked out now and done obviously in the next few days because, uh, you know, to me, doing the right tax planning with your portfolio is really, really important. But, you know, Janine, I think we need to 
really delve into that a little bit more with people as we go through the show tonight? I thought that it was really important to be clear and to be to clear the air, I should say, on that one. We all know that you have always been the voice of reason, Dale, on the topic. Now, we say that there's one reason and one reason only to sell stocks, and it's not for tax reasons. It's about protecting capital. If they trigger your sell rules, but there is more than one rule to use to sell a stock. We have an initial stop loss and a trailing stop. So how about we share a little secret and give everyone one of our favorite rules right now. I took an image out of the first book, How to Beat the Managed Funds by 20%, um, and we're gonna have a look at that right now. All right, so what are we looking at here? That's an example of brambles. It was in my first I book. I thought you'd recognise it, but you did put so many charts in there. I, that, all... I wrote that book did. so last decade. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a long now, time ago. The, the stuff in it is really relevant still to today. Now, BIL was a code for Brambles Industries mm -hmm. back then, but it's now BXB, it's Correct. Brambles Code. But, but the point of this is it's about looking at the application of trend lines and mm -hmm. how they hug the angle of the a rise and then allow you to exit at a safe point. A lot of people think trend lines are too simplistic mm. and they can just draw them everywhere. And, and I know in my book I share a, the, the couple of rules, the most important rules for trend lines. In our course there's five of five rules for trend lines to how to do them properly. Mm. But a momentum a trend line is a momentum indicator that measures the rate of change in price over time. So, so, so what's so that, important. So what's that really showing people then? It shows when to, it really shows people the angle or momentum of a stock, but it shows them when to get in and when to get out. And it does it with a high degree of accuracy. And this is where people just go, oh, trend line, mm. These are absolutely so amazing to making shed loads of money on the marketplace. It's I mean, the great thing about trend lines is it's it's mm -hmm. once you actually learn how to apply them properly, because yeah. it's not just drawing a line, as you said before, nah. once you learn that, then it's pretty clear and it can be quite mechanical for people. Well, it is. And, and I know in our diploma course, this is a big chunk of a whole module. Like we're talking about two or three books worth of stuff mm. in terms of words to really break it down to do it properly. Not technically hard, mm. but so important to get it right. If you get it right, yeah. you make a lot of money. All right then. Well, when you learn how powerful the right application of trend lines can be in your decision-making process, you'll want to be able to master them to take your trading to the next level. If you want more on trend lines, grab a copy of Dale's books. This way you can put into practice what we'll show you shortly as we share our thoughts on stocks and whether they indicate it's time to sell. All right, Janine, what's next? Well, Dale, something for everyone to remember. You must have in place every time you buy, um, and that this is something you've got to do, and that is the initial stop loss, and its purpose is to keep your capital safe. So let's take a look. I've extracted this from your second book, Accelerate Your Wealth. Now, you say in reality, when it comes to trading and protecting your capital, a stop loss is your best course of action as it will minimise your losses and it has the potential to maximise your profits. Indeed, the better you get at selling, the more money you'll make. Who said that? They must have been a genius. <laughs> but it's so true. There's a lot of people, it's like, it's like one of the questions I posed people at this seminar the other week that I did. Mm. I said, are you trading to win or trading to not lose? Mm. And pe most people trade to not lose okay. and then they get st stopped out of stocks all of the time and don't make much money. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, the more you get used to selling, especially in a loss, the more money you'll make. And it sounds, yeah. people go, well, how does that actually work? But how do you, how do you pass that on to someone who's just starting out so they really understand what you mean. Well, the thing is, is people don't like selling a stock in loss because then they think that's them, they're wrong. Yeah, in, that's important. In, in their analysis, they were wrong or they made mistakes. And no, it's mm. not. And to me, none of that is true mm. because stocks will do what they're going to do no matter what you want them to do. That's just the market. So you've just got to go, suck it up, princess. <laughs> that's the market. Here's my exit strategy. Mm. Boom. I'm out. Let's go into another stock. Yep. Whereas if you hang on thinking how bad your decisions were, then you'll beat yourself through to bad losses and more losses and more losses. Thank you, wise one. I want to come back to tax time now. Again. Where should you go to get information on capital gains tax and more importantly, how to treat a capital gain or loss for tax purposes? Should ask, they go to the brokers for that? Ask Janine. 
<laughs> um, no. <laughs> I mean, there's only two places you're going to go for tax advice. Number one is your accountant first and foremost. You always go to your accountant. But then you should also do your research yourself, especially if you're working in things like um, family trust, superannuation. Mm. There's also tax um, considerations on those sorts of entities that you're looking at. But looking at capital gains tax, how you treat that, go to the ATO mm. every day. The ATO has such a brilliant website. I love it. Even though, you know, ATO is sort of like a dirt, dirty word, but they will help you understand everything. So go there. All right. Now, Janine, I don't know about you, but I think it's time we're going to hit the charts because everyone's really wanting to know whether their stocks or on the list or the, or the stocks we have on the list are the ones that show it's time to sell. So let's get into them. Yeah, and it's really interesting, isn't it? Because mm -hmm. there are – what I found is that there's 300 stocks that I had a good look at. Mm -hmm. And there were so many, and I ended up just choosing a few ones because we've talked about a lot of stocks over you know, the number of years we've I been on this show. Quite a few off my list at so, the moment. Yeah, so I've just picked a couple that maybe we haven't talked so much about as well. Yeah. So should we have a look? Probably go for your life. All right. I've so, been waiting. CSL we have talked about, but not so much recently, and I thought this was a really important That's a one. That's definite to have on the list because it is a big stock. People love to love this stock and hang mm. on to it because over the history, it has been really good from a capital growth Cocktail's point of view. Cocktail's the same boat too, isn't it? Um, uh, look, it depends on when you're looking at it, mm. but um, CSL has just been sold off so strongly in the past week. Now, just having a quick look at what it's done on a particular day, we can see there that there's a big gap down on the chart there now. It may come back up and try to fill that gap, but it's a question of when. And mm. when a stock falls out of bed like this, you're better off to say, mm. right, I'm just going to get out of it, keep my money safe because I really don't know what's happening. But this, this is a stock wise. everybody loves to buy and hold. They do, yeah. And to me, that's where if you look at the top 20 stock, it's quite easy if you look over mm. the history, don't buy and hold. And mm. it's just one of those sins that people do. And so people thinking, oh, well, I've had it for a few years now. I might be losing money. You're saying just get out of it. But this has been a different stock, right, in terms mm. of the don't buy and hold. That's, you know, like if you look at some of the banks, that's the mm. case. But this one, you could have said buy and hold and you'd be fine. But, but not anymore. But not now. We don't know whether this low is going to be taken out mm. at this stage yet, given the big okay. sell-off that we've seen. Thanks. I'd just be watching carefully and waiting um, if you're looking for an opportunity in this mm. one because there will be some good opportunities again to get CSL. All right, but not for a while. Next. All right, now the next one I've got here is... Um, EBOS, EBOS Group, which has just been sold off this month really strongly. Now, mm -hmm. if we, we I didn't put trend lines on CSL, but you could get trend lines on lots of stocks coming up this um, underneath this told line you here. Exit the stocks. So now in this case, it depends where you put your line, but it's not that clear. See that you can't get a trend line there mm -hmm. yet. You see, so some people might be thinking, well, how does a trend line help me here? Well. If you had the trend line up this rise in here, you would have been out of it already and then see it rise again thinking, oh, you know, I should have still stayed in it. Mm. The trend lines don't work. Why would I bother getting out on a trend line? But this is exactly why trend lines can... Yeah, but so what if it then goes up? Because look at what happened later. But and how that's often really have you seen point. that? It crosses a trend line, you exit, and then you get mm. a bit of a shoot up and then it crashes. Lots of times. Lots of times. So and it's just a pattern thing. So if you understand how the mm. patterns work, you'll appreciate why it happens. Because mm. there's quite a few stocks that mm. I've seen in the top 100 that are sells at the moment. Yeah. So, but there's quite a lot of buyers too. Okay, so so this is one out of the 300 that I picked. And it's, yeah. you know, the next one I've got here is IDP Education, yes. which has really fallen out of bed over recent months now. Mm. It had a big decline here into the low in June 2000. Uh, 2022 but mm -hmm. it did try to recover but again this is a pattern that we know if you've done our courses you'll appreciate what this is but you know again a really nice trend line was applied mm -hmm. up under this low here but when it took it out you might have been thinking oh it rebounded I should have stayed in it but yep. again down again and now it's taken out that low so mm -hmm. it's all is it's a question of timing of when you look at a stock well, it is. you know so i mean we could just take a, a couple of bars off this chart and i'm just going to have a bit of a play for just a couple of seconds just taking these off but if we take these off here and you were looking at the stock there you'd be thinking oh i'm up mm. you know i'm doing really well a couple of months later what happens you know so it's all a relative to time yeah so in terms of so we've got more stocks to sell 
Or is that the one? So they're the ones, they're the main ones that I've picked. I've just kept this list small um, in terms of the sell side So what you're suggesting is people use some trend lines on the stocks and mm. to see whether they're below the trend lines on the stocks. And if they don't know how to draw that, buy my book to learn how to do that. Exactly. So, because obviously we're trying to, the thing is, is if you've got stocks in profit, that are telling you to sell, you could offset those, the, the gains on those with stocks that are in loss that you're losing capital on to offset mm. your gains to balance that out. So, but talk to your accountant about that to yeah. balance all that. So that's what we're talking about. So we're now moving on to stocks you can buy or you're looking to buy. Well, what I want to do first. Um, what are we looking at? Yeah, well, I think I've you know done this bit a, a over T, sorry to say that, but ask about, can I use that word on, on the show? I'm not going to stop you. Um, I say worse than you do. Yeah. Well, I mean, it was exciting to see how some stocks have unfolded. There's no doubt about mm -hmm. that. And we do get excited. And there's lots more um, that we mm -hmm. can talk about. But, I mean, we need to start mm -hmm. looking at um, sectors and, and okay. um, what's happening in the sectors as well, don't we? All right. So but I, I want to stress to everyone that right now you need to look at your portfolios. You have got some very important decisions to make before the 30th of June. So in the next part of the show, you want to share with you stocks that are more likely to go up. Now, remember, if you hold on to stocks that are going down, remember, you cannot put your capital invested in ones going up and you're missing out on this opportunity. And that's really what we're talking about there, wasn't it? Yeah, so, it is. Because it's really important to know that it can't be stressed enough. So what you have to do is, or next, is I'm sure... Um, well, I know there's a lot more we've mm. got to cover, but I'll, you need to look at your portfolio right now mm. and look at what's making profits, what's making losses. Look, some stocks any in the people's profit portfolio stocks, might have been going down for some, some time. Correct. And they've so got they've to got, consider. Most people will hold two, three, four, mm. five stocks that are losing their money at yeah. the moment. But if you've got some of the stocks that are in profit mm. that are telling you that they should be sold, instead of losing more capital on that, mm. maybe sell a losing stock. Well, they could, they could text in to us and let us know because there could be some that have been falling for a while, but they might be close to turning around. Well, so that's true text too. in. They could do that. Yeah. So look, now it's time to have a look at, um, the first thing to do is to, we need to look at um, the sectors, don't we now? Okay. Well, I don't know. You're running the show. So let's <laughs> so refer to the table. And we'll look at every month. And this is um, the Australian sectors, but I'm not actually going to bring the, the whole table up. What I want to do is look at some individual sectors. Yep. So, and it's interesting because we've we've looked, every month we look at it and the underdogs mm -hmm. at the moment are yep. financials, yep. materials yep. and energy, right? Yeah, and healthcare. Two of the two biggest sectors and, and the and for healthcare, smaller. which we've seen CSL being, you know, the, have okay. um, worse for wear just recently. So we're going to so, look at about what's moving now yep. and where the best gains are likely to occur. So how about we just get into the so, charts? Yeah, so let's Instead do stop that. Instead of talking about it. Yeah, please, let's do that. Okay, so the first sector to look at yep. is really the materials sector. And, of course, this shows us what the biggest stocks in that sector, like BHP and Rio and, and FNG, are all doing at the moment. So we saw the end of the, the mining um, decline or crash, mm -hmm. if you like, into um, 2016. And since then, we've had a stellar move out of that. COVID put a bit of a dint in it. And we've seen this large sideways move unfold, a bit of a correction into the low in 2022. But it appears that that is actually the low and we're moving on. We've made a new high since then. It doesn't feel like it in the mining space at the moment. There's been a bit of uncertainty. And you and I have both been mm. waiting because we've seen certain sectors in the market take off. Yeah. This one hasn't done it yet. Um, and we're just watching for well, that opportunity. I mean, currently, it's here's your high way back in the, before the GFC. Yep. At seventeen three eighty one, and currently it's closed at eighteen oh two, eighteen and twenty. Mm. Yeah. So, what has it been doing since two thousand and seven? Well, that's right. I mean, um, not so, much. So we haven't seen growth overall relative to where mm. valuations were so it's back lagging here. Behind, basically, that's what I'm saying. I think it, it is big time, and we've we've been saying that. So, I mean, if you just look at that, there we've seen this test of support here. There's a number of places where it's tested support, and it's just mm. primed to. to Move, make the next move. We're waiting patiently for that. Financials. Um, financials is another one that's really been lagging. Big sideways move there. We're just watching to see what happens in the financial space well, at the moment. Well, it's highs from four or five years ago. Yeah, so you'd think that if you look at the potential here that there's probably, um, you know, at least 15% to that point and then when it goes through that, more on top of that. Um, it's been holding, holding back a yep. hell of a lot. 
Yep, so that's financials and that was materials. And now I've actually pulled up the wrong one. So you just have to excuse me for a minute. So healthcare is another one. Um, this was CSL, but it all looks like CSL because it is the dominant player in the yep. in the space. So you've just got to be very careful at hand picking stocks. So now let's just take a look and because but materials Sonic healthcare is looking really good. Sonic looks okay at the moment, doesn't mm. it? It's mm. one of them. And ResMed looking better. Um, and and there's another stock on this li list as well, which I want to have a look at. So BHP, obviously, we, we it looks like the sector chart for good reason. Mm -hmm. It stayed up. Look, it hasn't been a big sell-off on BHP at all. No. And so just have a look here. While a lot of things have been going down, BHP has actually been holding its own. It did come back. Um, we've seen a you know 17% move down, but that's nothing for BHP that's given normal. what we've seen unfold before that. Mm. So it's just a real test now of that level around $42. We're just waiting to see if it's found support. So BHP like could be an interesting one. There's a nice... Um, angle of this trend moving up here on the monthly chart there. We just yeah. grab that COVID low and we can see it's just respecting that. So that's really So these see. are the, the ones. So we know where the these are. We, are we these are opportunities. At, so if you've got so dead wood in your portfolio, we're just waiting for some of these to oh, okay. make their moves. Because I, was, I yeah. mean, just, I'm a little bit confused because I thought we were on the sectors. But anyway, so we know where the best moves are likely to we've come from. We've looked at the sectors because yeah. we've picked the bottom so, trawlers, which are the, yeah. the materials, the financials. Yeah. Um, we look potentially. You could look at energy and healthcare. I haven't. I, I yeah. had a list of twenty stocks, gotcha. so I've culled that so, back. So, so mm. the best moves are likely to come when the market market makes its next move. Now, the key is to find the best stocks in these areas. So we're talking about energy, financials, and materials. That's so right. That's, that's what we're looking at now. Yep. So and BHP there, is a material stock. Yeah, there are many ways that we can search for stocks. So today we're going to show you one approach, okay? okay. So we're going so to that. So that. that was looking at the sectors, first of all. Um, mm -hmm. And there are different ways to find stocks. So it's a, it could be that you go through the top 50 shares on the, on the market and yeah. you can just trawl through looking at the charts that way. It could be that you look at the earnings potential of the companies and yep. um, look at earnings forecasts and, and just have some idea about what you think they need to be. Um, but so, for example, if we're looking at the stocks again, which we should go back to because we haven't finished well, the list yet. Say, are we up to, are we going to be doing the stocks to sort of look at to buy in those sectors? Well, so the energy that's is right. the materials so we, we, being materials. I looked through some of those and I just handpicked a few, in particular, more so in materials and financials to okay. see what I could find there. But financials has been the laggard at the moment, so mm -hmm. it's a bit hard to I say. Because I don't mind Woodside either. I don't know whether you picked that one either. Yeah, energy, I haven't pulled any through into energy because I was limited by the number that I've got. So Santos is one that Okay, so let's I go really into like the charts there. now. Um, so we've got BHP. I just, so, I'm not trying to drive the traffic, if you know what I mean, but I want to make yeah. sure everybody gets their value for what we're talking about here. Yeah, so look, IGO is another good one in that sector. Yeah. Um, we're seeing that IGO is actually, um, it's not as big as BHP, obviously. It can yeah. be a bit more volatile, but just look at the nature of that trend that's That up does there. look nice, doesn't it? It's just pulled back at the moment. We just need to see that it's actually going to push up. If it pulled down through this low on the 2nd of June, I'd change my mind about it. Yeah. But while you've got some momentum going behind it, it, it looks good. So... Um, I guess if we were looking at how the, the trend lines are working here and and thinking about that, we can see underneath all of that, we've got a nice rise still Isn't happening. Isn't that nice? I always love a, an uptrend line underneath a buy. Yeah, exactly. Um, and then we've got Coronado Global Resources. So we've seen, mm. we've talked about this on the show before. Yeah. Um, and it's it pull, I just couldn't go past it just because of the pullback we've seen, the big sell-off, but now it's reversing back up again, setting up down there at the bottom. And I, I, it's a smaller stock. But it looks nice. It depends on your how you um, you know handle risk and how you, you know you pick stocks for your own portfolio whether this would be suitable or not. Mm -hmm. But I just think this looks really good. Um, there may be a trend line down there, and if not, it could be forming soon. But that looks really interesting to me as well. It does, and it's so important that you get the right stocks for your portfolio and how to do all of that. I know we teach yeah. do a lot of it with our students, mm. with recordings and our students how to put all their watch lists together. But I, I actually like it the stocks It depends how chosen. broad their watch list is. You know, if you can mm. go out to the – if you're um, – you know, you can handle that volatility and the risk and you can go out outside the 100, that's great. An individual can handle that because the liquidity is such that – you're not going to um, move the market, you know, you're going to move the share mm. price too much. But sometimes in the bottom of that 300, there are some stocks which, 
you know, it could mm. be an issue in terms of the volatility being moved by very few players. So mm. it's something to be I mean, I like the stocks you've picked and I think that's great. And I, I think you've shown real good restraint because I said there are mm. so many that we can put in both the buy and the sell sure. at this point in time, which is why people need to have their own set of rules around how what stocks mm. you put on your watch list and how you construct your portfolio because it is really context driven how what type of portfolio am i driving yeah which is what they need to understand first because it's sort out what the portfolio you want first is mm. and then find the stocks that fit that yes not the other way around which so many people do so i love what it is exactly and look um, nickel mm. industries is another one mm. that i quite like at the moment it, it's not confirming yep. which way it's going yet but we're seeing this nice little consolidation yep. it's um, making here right now. Yep. It really needs to push up through these levels, though. So it's it's not ready yet. It's Excuse not ready me. yet. <laughs> but it could be soon. I like it. Um, now you, I've got one. Down? I've got one here from the healthcare sector, which I thought yep. was really interesting. So ST Health Limited, a bit different to CSL, yep. isn't it? Um, moving in the right direction, if we get a trend line up that underneath looks all so of that, good, doesn't it? we can see it's bounced off it. And I think that, you know, this, even though we've seen a big move and some people might say, oh, look, it's already taken off and probably mm -hmm. missed out. And that's where people, if you're looking yep. too narrowly focused at short term movements in the share prices, you're going to miss the big picture, which is why when we do our analysis, we always start on the monthly chart first and look mm. at the big picture and time frames and you know price pattern and time yep. on the monthly chart to work out where the share is going but to me i think this is a interesting opportunity and it's fine mm. for an individual even mm. with the liquidity that it has okay so i also like cba westpac which we've talked about on other shows one that's sort of a bit of an underdog that i've picked here Yep. is AMP. It's a bit of a dog stock from it time is one to of time. Those dog stocks, but and it may continue to do that. So I'm just putting a bit of caution on that and suggesting that if you if you don't handle risk well, then you're better off to stick with CBA mm. and Westpac. But AMP might be really interesting um, later in the year. We'll this just could see be how the dark horse of the whole lot, couldn't it? It, it could really in terms does. of the financials, yeah. Mm. But I do like it. Well, that is our thoughts or our that is out for our topic for tonight. Now, Janine, I think it's time we get into your famous What The segment. Great. For those watching this for the first time, this is a segment where Dale and I challenge what's happening around the market and have a bit of fun with it as well. Now, I have got a story that's going to make viewers hopping mad. Well, is it going to make me hopping mad, let alone the viewers? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. You've got, you've got I don't know. I think you'd expect it. When I you would see expect it, it okay. Yeah. All right, can we keep moving on then? And, and I, can I call you silly Me? saying that? No. What is something that is concerning Australian families at the moment? Oh, that's the biggest pretty thing. simple. That's rising cost of living, interest rates going up, you know, 11 rises in 12 months. That's pretty easy. Yes, but it's not that. Cost so, of living, yes, but give me more detail. Can you just tell me what it is instead of just beating around the bush and stringing me? You know I'm impatient. I just like to keep you hanging there, and I think this image will tell all. Okay. The article on Seven said Santos has posted record production earnings and cash flow in the first half of 2022 on increased demand and rising oil and LNG prices. The Adelaide headquartered company reported on Wednesday a half-year net profit after tax of 1.167 billion US dollars or 1.66 billion Australian dollars for the first half of the financial year. That's an increase of 230, uh, 200 is it, and 30% or 230%, not quite sure there, and an underlying profit of 1.267 billion US dollars or 1.8 billion Australian dollars, up 300%. Now that is a, that's a serious. Everybody's stressed about energy prices <laughs> exactly. going up. The government says they're going to do something about it, and some freaking company company in Adelaide's gone up three hundred percent in their profits. Who's running the show? Now, exactly. Now, so you know who is controlling what here? It's our resources, isn't it? It's our. They're making a shed load of money, and yet mum and dad are struggling on the street to pay their energy. Struggling bill. to We've pay got their pensioners borrowing not wanting costs. to put their fire on in the middle of winter because they can't pay the bill. Yeah. And freezing these guys are making night, a billion, that's just... Having to snuggle up together. To if I was warm. allowed to say the F word, I'd say the F word. Fruit. Tingle. How's that? Fire truck. <laughs> so Santos, though, is a great company and it is a stock that it is. It's I a great would looking have stock. on my list any day. Um, it's more challenging to trade, um, but the point here really is 
you know, what's going on here when you're seeing these big companies make huge profits? Well, it's not and the only Australians... energy company that's making big profits out of other people's misfortune or misery. So where are the royalties that we're supposed to be getting from all well, of this to go that. back it's into subsidising How can they justify the high prices to make Australians, that profit? That's what they should be doing, using yes. the royalties or increasing the royalties. I, think our, mm. I know people will be upset with me, but I think our government means a bit more guts behind them and to make sure that we're being looked after, not the big end of town. Well, look, inadvertently we do get a benefit from Santos making the big bucks through our super funds. Which would you prefer? To be able to pay the gas bill, Janine. That's right. Um, not me, but obviously the people out there that you know can't afford it. But anyway, that is it for our What The segment for this week. Another good one, Janine. Now, text your questions to the number on your screen right now. So make sure you pick up your phone now and dial that number. The numbers are on your screen. Whilst we wait for your text, we will get into the next email. Our next email, which is, or well, this one is actually from Cameron, and Cameron says, Hi, darling Janine, I'd love your opinion on the F45 stock FXLV. As you may know, um, F45 is a fitness company with gyms all over Australia. They're experiencing financial issues with 48 of their gyms now up for sale and a possible liquidation on the horizon, with the stock price dropping from $14 down to um, 0.6 of a dollar or 60 cents basically I think in the last few years and being ambitious um, in thinking this could make a comeback with its nationwide influence and celebrities like Mark Wahlberg now promoting F45 merch and gym classes on his social media. This to me looks like it could survive and make a comeback with the help of these big names and their following. Please provide me with your insights on this as I'm not sure if I'm being overly ambitious or seeing a great long-term holding opportunity. Thanks, Cameron. Um, this is a US stock, Janine, so we don't mm. put US stocks on the Australian stock market show. I so, just want to talk about the principle of it, though. Correct. I want to talk about the... That's why I left it in here rather it was than a good email Cameron back and saying, no, we don't put US stocks. Mm. This is an Australian stock market show, so I don't put that on it. But... Mark Wahlberg's been involved in that since it started, so it hasn't worked. It doesn't matter who's involved in no. a company, really. What matters is what the share price is mm. doing. Mm. So we know the share price has gone from bad to worse, mm. and a chance of a recovery is more likely to see a takeover, and that mm. would be short-lived. Yeah. So you There's know, there's a reason why it's trading at sixty mm. cents um, and gone down from whatever it was, eighteen or nineteen dollars, yeah. or something like that. So because it's you know that's the thing you've got to look at. Just because a celebrity sort of behind it he's been behind it the whole time um so that's nothing new to me and i don't think i think you're probably being a bit more emotional about it cameron rather than logical yeah when you look at the chart it's yeah, looks, exactly. it looks crap um mm. but again thank you for sending the question in anyway but next time make sure it's an australian stock please so but uh, again um right now i can't see anything positive about f45 just let it play out um, and look at some really good Australian stocks like we've shown you. But, Janine, we do have another text Great. here, and this one, I believe, is from Jo, um, and she's asking thoughts on the tech sector, bounce back or on the way down, looking at wise tech. So we're going to have a look at wise tech. So why you bring up wise tech, yeah. um, WTC? I will talk about the tech sector. A lot of people, I did talk about it on my market report last week because yep. I talked about the difference between the US tech and Australian tech because I know a lot of people just think because the US tech stocks have been moving up. I mean, the NASDAQ's up 30-something percent, nearly 40%. The S&P 500's up big because of the tech sector mm. in the US. And the tech sector in the US is about 28% of their S&P 500. The tech sector in, in Australia is like 2%. Yeah. So it's completely different. And mm. a lot of people see, oh, Apple's up, Microsoft up. So they go jump on tech in Australia thinking mm. Australia's going to do the same thing. You can't think that because Australia tech is different. You've got to look at but it has company specific. A but reasonable what we've seen is a lot of people trying to mm. jump on tech in Australia, but our tech sector is so thin on the ground too. Well, it's been there's up 50% because it, there's a lot of copycatting going on. That's what I was trying to say. Yep. But our, what I'm saying is the tech sector in the US is more broader than what ours is. It's bigger and more broader. Ours mm. is very much driven by a couple of companies. So you can't just naturally assume. Like Zero mm. is dragging our tech sector yeah. out up because it's done it's so great job. well. Mm. But don't think it's a broad thing across our sector. That's yep. the mistake a lot of investors make. So let's have a look at WiseTech. You got WiseTech right. up? Yes, please. Or let's did you do. want to talk about the sector itself? Well, we could just quickly have a look at the sector while I've yeah. got it there. So 
there's that 50% rise off that bottom there that yeah. we're talking about. So it hasn't quite gone as hard as what we've seen in the US, has it? No, it hasn't. So, you know, that's interesting, but there's still more upside mm. to go here. Now, Wise Tech is in blue sky territory and mm. until something stops it, it's, it could keep going. But Would you buy that now? No. It's had one, look, if we look at where it's is gone that a through. No? That's a no. Okay. Through that high there, sixty dollars. We've yeah. seen one, two, three, four, five months up. Okay. Let's see what it does. One, two, three, four months up. One, two, three, four, five maybe months yeah, up. It's due to come back. This, this is the longest stretch that it had back in two thousand and nineteen. This big push up. Could it do that again? I don't, I don't so. think so. I think it'll turn down and come down for one or two months, maybe mm -hmm. longer. I think that's what it's going to do. And so a trend line would be perfect on that, wouldn't it? It would be. It would work perfectly, it, just, but now it's not one the time. The, I, and she didn't say that she was in it, did she? No. Um, she just asked what what it was going to do. What our thoughts were. What our thoughts were. So please just sit back, watch it. If you're not in this stock, it's now not time to get into it. But if you're not into it, stick it on your watch list because it'll probably come back for one or more months and that may give you another buying opportunity from there because it is still a really, really good stock. Um, Janine, but we do have another uh, tech stock for you. Okay, Zipco, is it? So this is from Jared. Okay, Jared, thanks very much. Bought in at um, 7.20 on August 21. Your thoughts, will it go back to 7.20? Um, I'm just looking at that mm. there, August 21. Okay, so this is a really interesting chart, right? Um, it's gone all the way down, almost. It's heading down towards this low back in 2014. Do you yeah. think it's going to go lower? I, it couldn't go much lower. Um, it hasn't got much further to go. But the, the really disappointing thing... This is a buy thing, and pray. But the really disappointing thing, though, Dale, is look at this low. Yeah. July 2022, it's mm -hmm. taken out that low now. I know, but there's so many people bought this stock on that euphoria through here. Mm. This is a dog stock now. It's not going to go anywhere for a long time. So then it's what we are talking about earlier. And I'm sorry I'm saying that to this yeah. gentleman, and I don't want to be... Um, Jared to him, but this is a stock he, just, he should have sold so long mm. ago. It's not funny because this is one of those sectors that was not really a regulated. Everything else, the banks were letting it go, yeah. And now these sort of payment type of systems, payment gateway, buy now pay later, all of it. There's a lot more competition mm. happening at the moment. This is not going anywhere near seven twenty for such a long time. It's not funny. Mm. So is it one of those stocks that you should just go rip the bandit off? Let's get it out of well, the. Well, you wouldn't have much left, so you Possibly. know maybe it's just a matter of saying, that's, "Well, okay, that's the question." Don't is, put if any I've only got a few hundred it. dollars left out of a few thousand. Mm. then what's the use in selling it? But if yeah. you put 50000 into it and you've still got 10000 in it, well, then what can you do with the 10000 Well, it is tax time. Maybe he needs to speak to his accountant. Yeah, I'm not saying anything, but mm. to me, not a good stock at the moment. Wouldn't be buying it, wouldn't hold it. Our next email um, is from Craig. Hi, Dale and Janine. As I watched your weekly report last night, I could not agree with you more on the sell-off last week being played by the big players. My question is, last Tuesday night, I looked at the charts and three stocks were approaching the previous high, uh, bar XRO 360 and MP1, and also the XAO was in the same place. I was thinking about selling at this point to take profits and reset my portfolio for next financial year. As looking at the charts, there would be some small pullback before the next move. I decided to stick to the rules of share trading and to ensure stop losses are in place. Is there a time when you trade that you feel you should sell when everything is up but waiting for that pullback? P.S. Mm. I have watched the Dunning-Kruger effect on TalkingWealth.com and as time goes on, I find myself looking back at how my trading has improved with a long way still to go. I can't thank the team at Wealth Within for the diploma in share trading and CFD Forex courses enough. I'm up to module two that you provide. Also, thanks for launching TalkingWealth.com to help with the emotion of trading. Cheers, Craig. Thank you so much oh, for that's that a nice email. email isn't it? Fantastic. Yeah. Obviously, he's a graduate of our courses in the CFD FX course now and, and a mm. Talking Wealth subscriber. So, well done. So, um, yeah. What's your answer? So, look, I mean, my answer is no. Mm. Why? I mean, it's pretty simple. From what I believe he's saying, he's saying stocks have gone up to some sort of resistance level, mm. like previous highs. So I think what he's trying to say is, do I can just sell thinking that they're going to come down and just come back in later on? 
well, what do I do? And Where's the evidence that they're going to come correct. back down? We'd have to look at the charts. Did you but want to look at anything? Well, we can look at 360 if you like, because I do. Life 360 okay. is great. Um, zero, a lot of people have seen. So we, I know we've shown that on the show a few times as well, but 360 we can look at. But the thing is, is we have rules for a reason. Mm. Saying a stock has hit a resistance level and going, I'll just get out of it, take is my not profit. Enough is speculation because mm. we only trade on confirmation, not speculation. So a stock has to tell us that it's turning around and reversing before we exit and the, the opposite off a bottom. And there's usually a combination of and things going on that correct. tell us so that. So just hitting a point mm. is not necessarily a, p- a point to sell. And a lot of, I know a lot of people that trade, not, not our students, mm. might hit a stock target, a price target or a, what they call a, uh, a stop exit that they have where they set a target and get out. Mm. And to me, I think that's wrong because mm. you're cutting your profits, you know. Yep. And why would you want to do that? Because the golden rule of trading is let profits run. Mm. And what so he's look, suggesting is not necessarily to do that. So in terms of letting profits run, yeah. you and I both like the way I think that this the stock is unfolded. Is amazing at the moment. It looks great. It looks great. It looks like it's got huge mm. potential there. It could go to, you know, 9 or $10, mm. couldn't it? So what he's saying is here's a big high there at $7.43. Mm. It hit um, $7.45 and he's going, well, maybe I should just sell this and wait for a comeback, a pullback, sorry, and then buy it in at a lower price. But have a look at this week so far. It's pushed down and come right back up again. So this is only two days of data. So Monday, Tuesday of this week. So we're on Tuesday the 27th. Yep. But what if, it is, if, what if he sold it because of this, because it's come back off that high on a bearish week on our market? It's still an up bar. It's still mm. closed higher than it opened. There's nothing there up? at all to say there's, sell. There's zero there to say sell. Yeah. And that's really why I wanted to bring 360 out because mm. I think this is a great stock. I think it's um, people should have a look at this stock. So just be careful in terms of, and, and I know you're still developing your trading strategies and your trading plan and developing that experience because in the course we've taught you how to trade. Now you have to make those um, those decisions as a trader. So what I want you to do is make trader decisions. And that means... What we taught you through the course, make sure you trade on confirmation, not speculation. But see, module two, know. he's not quite there yet. So he's module three is yet. the one that's going to give him no, the he's tools. he's on module three of the CFD FX course. Oh, okay. Well, he's then completed. he's already got it all. He's got it all. So, that's, so he would know what to but do. But I understand a lot of people, it's their journey. But Some why people, would you want to sell something before the end of the financial year on a profit anyway with no rules? I mean, correct. you're going to be paying the tax man in the short term rather than later. Well, that is another question, isn't it? So, mm-hmm. But if you do want to send us a text, please send us a text to the numbers on your screen. Now, that's all we have on 360. We hope you've enjoyed the new hour-long show on YouTube. For those watching on Talking Wealth, stay tuned for your bonus content. Remember, if you have a stock that you want us to look at or you have a burning question, then send an email to info at wealthwithin.com.au and watch next Tuesday night's show. In next week's show, we take a look at the top 10 undervalued stocks in the Australian market and then we'll answer whether now is the time to buy them. We'll also answer your questions and so much more, so make sure you put next Tuesday night show in your calendar. Also, give us a big thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Now it's time to say goodbye to our YouTube viewers. We do hope you enjoyed what we presented tonight. For those watching on TalkingWealth.com, stay tuned with us for your bonus content. As always, thank you for joining us for now. Goodbye, good luck, and good trading.